Introducing the APP candidate for St. Michael Central, Bishop Joseph Adley. Barbadians and constituents of St. Michael Central, particularly pleased to have the opportunity to say a few words uh, with you today. And thank you for letting me into your homes and for giving me an air. You know, the honor and high sense of responsibility of standing in the gap for Barbados over the last three and a half years in the defense of its democracy has been mine as leader of the opposition. My thanks especially though to Senator Franklin and Senator Drakes for helping me to lead the fight in preserving that democracy beyond purely the institutional level. I'm especially pleased today to be a part of a team of men and women under the banner of the Alliance Party for Progress, the APP, APP. A group of highly capable persons, persons of great academic and professional distinction, persons of good moral fiber, and exceptionally important integrity. The Alliance is birthed out of the very compatible philosophies, if you prefer ideologies, of the United Progressive Party, and the People's Party for Democracy and Development. That philosophy gives birth to and is guided by a sense of duty to a sovereign God, a God from whom we derive a sense of duty to our fellow men and also a sense of value as we interact with men in our society in various contexts. But what is the Alliance Party for Progress? What do we represent? What do we stand for? And I will take the opportunity today just perhaps to share briefly and with reference to 10 important points of philosophy, of policy posture, of intended programming, all in an effort to ensure that we pursue together on your behalf the interests of all Barbadians. One, we stand for and intend to implement policies which will give way to people-centered initiatives which bring meaningful benefits. In other words, policy that starts from the bosom of the people and from which benefits for the people are derived. People must matter and do matter more than anything else. Secondly, a governance model that works. That is, it has integrity in its operations, its capacity in terms of its ability to deliver, and it carries transparency with reference to the high levels of accountability that will be inbuilt. Three, a growth model that results in shared prosperity for all and not the skewed kind of development that we now endure, which convey benefits only to a privileged few. A system that allows for obvious and fair access to treatment and redress in matters of legal, social, and economic justice. A commitment to the building of sound platforms for the provision of education, housing, and other social welfare services. Six, a significant role for the state and its involvement in enterprise, while at the same time, and more importantly so, facilitating investment, private sector-led growth, and the development of labor, all in the context of a song social partnership which is uncompromised and unfettered. Seven, the elimination of corruption, and it has to be eliminated. We are at a stage now where corruption is so rife in Barbados that a clear objective must be elimination, not simply reduction, not simply curbing, but elimination of corruption in Barbados. We do this through potent legislation enacted and executed or implemented. Fair remuneration and appropriate mechanisms for accountability in the context of clear transparency. The expansion of ownership opportunity in Barbados, both with respect to land, business and capital. 
It cannot be that in 2022, after all of the investment which sacrificially this country has made in areas of education and other very important areas of socioeconomic development and our political development as well, it cannot be that in 2022, after all of this investment, that the majority of Barbadians still remain landless and otherwise dispossessed. The Alliance Party for Progress will change that. We are here to stop poor people from being poor. Land access, the matter of land taxes, must be subjects of priority address for a new Alliance Party for Progress government. Capital access, which continues to deny to poor aspiring business men and women in Barbados the opportunity to build thriving business. Well, all they can do is stand and watch while those who are already abundant in wealth are further blessed by the generosity of a government's hand. Business development through enterprise must be a priority for us. When I was but a boy growing up in Station Hill, and that is in St. Michael Central for those of you across Barbados who may not know, my mother always drilled in my head, Junior, go to school and learn well. Don't want to see you end up picking pong grass on Waterford Plantation, which was not far from where I grew up. And I've, ever since then, and especially in my young adult life, and with my university training, developed a perspective on this thing, which I think is pertinent for Barbados today. And it is this, if we look at the development of uh, our social architecture or economic profile, even our model of governance in Barbados, what we find is simply this, that once we were slaves in their fields, then we moved beyond that and we became servants in their houses or their homes. And then we gradu graduated and it would seem as though there's a sense of satisfaction of having attained this level. We become stewards in their offices and their businesses. So we are accountants and we are managers and we control the technology systems. We are but stewards in the offices and companies. The philosophy of the Alliance Party for Progress is this. We must move beyond being stewards and become owners in Barbados. So the pursuit of mass-based ownership in Barbados is a premium objective for this party, which I have the honor to lead, and that's a commitment we make to you. Number nine, the building out of a democracy in which power in real and actual terms is resided in the hands of the people. It resides with the people. That is what republic means. Real power is reposed in the hands of the people. Democracy also implies that. We in Barbados have now become accustomed and seemingly sometimes contented with a situation where power comes to the people once every five years. In this instance, for whatever unknown reason, it has come in the middle of a pandemic three and a half years early. The people have had no say and will be exposed to possible infection through spread of the Omicron virus, admittedly by the officials among us. But we promise you a model of governance, a culture of democracy, the outworkings of institutions which will clearly demonstrate that power resides in the hands of the people, not once every five years, but every day. And we'll be a party where people's participation and the further inclusiveness of the people of this country will be reflected in how we are governed, how we govern ourselves, and how we remain accountable to each other as we chase our national dreams. So it's a building of a democracy in which power, in real and actual terms, lies in the hands of the people. The fashioning of institutions respected highly, functional, very efficiently, and serving the interests of Barbados in the region and beyond. A nation-building exercise that does not jettison our values, it does not dismantle our foundational institutions, it does not denude our communities of their richness 
And it certainly does not deny our nations, our peoples, reliance on a God who is sovereign and supreme and who has expressed his, himself in bountiful blessings upon this country for the past several hundred years. So I ask you when you go to the polls on January 19th, all across Barbados, to consider the candidates, the men and women, men who are exceptional achievers in the areas of academic training, professional responsibility, and some who are very active in their communities and who are well connected with the people. We have a rich blend of talent, some experience as Lynette would have shared, some youthful exuberance and enthusiasm, which is always good, but all of us possess of a sense of unified vision for the betterment of Barbados. A government must become an instrument that brings about meaningful change. And several of the policies to which I just made reference may fall into the realm of things we have heard before. Some of them do, for sure. We will always admit that. There's hardly every, everything, there's hardly anything which is totally new. But you know this, what matters or what makes the difference is the implementation. And if the implementation leads to radical and revolutionary change, then we are serving a purpose as a government. And we lay the charge against this government that though they have managed certain things well, they have not brought about significant revolutionary change in the lives of the people of Barbados, either at the level of the poor working class of Barbados, the many unemployed all across this country, or even a private sector battling the ravages and salts of the winds of COVID and other pressures coming from abroad. The Alliance Party for Progress makes a commitment that when you elect us to government, we will pursue policies which in their intention and in their actualization will bring about radical and revolutionary change. We are here to stop poor people from being poor. We are here to engage ourselves with the people in a wholesome exercise of nation building. That's what we are committed to. So I ask you again, all across this country, on January 19th, to vote for the candidates of the Alliance Party for Progress. I ask you humbly to vote for myself in St. Michael's Central. Many of you knew that I grew up in that constituency, spent the first 30 years or so of my life. All my adult formation stems from my experiences in St. Michael's Central. Some of you may know as well, I pastor a church, senior minister of the church, which is located in St. Michael's Central and have served the communities of St. Michael Central for the past over 30 years. I've done that selflessly. I've done it sacrificially. I've done it out of a sense of calling, a sense of duty to God, and a strong desire to help my fellow men and women, and my friends and associates, and many with whom I grew up, in Station Hill. The Lord has helped me to be an instrument of blessing to many. I've led the church in programs of ministry that offer social welfare and financial assistance to families and households which are stressed long before COVID. That has only been intensified since COVID. Every service of the church, whether it be funerals, in times of bereavement and sadness, uh, whether it be weddings or baby christenings in times of gladness and bliss, have offered the services of church all without charge because I'm here under a sense of calling from God to serve the people of this land and through the instrumentality of that church in Station Hill to serve the surrounding communities of Bush Hall and Waterford and Bank Hall and Water Hall land and Station Hill and Dean's Village and Flint Hall. That is what Joseph Athley has committed his life to through the ministry of the church these past over three decades without pay, without asking for any returns because I seek to serve you. And I bring that same attitude to this moment of election on January 19th. You know me and I know you. I ask you for your vote. I humbly do so, and I pray God's blessings on you. Thank you. We rockin' with it.